Hi, Anthony. Hello, hello. So Maria. nice Good to, to see be. You. Good to see you too. So nice to be here with you. So, Anthony, because of the comments I got from the the last time we got together, I thought it would be interesting for the public if you shared a, when you started doing astrology and some information about yourself, your background. Okay. Um, well, as you know, I'm I'm a psychiatrist. I worked mm -hmm. all my professional life as a psychiatrist, and but astrology has always been a serious hobby of mine. And it started when I was fairly young. Uh, my guess is around 11 years old. Oh, that's young. <laughs> <laughs> and I've told this story before, but very briefly, I was aware of astrology. You know, it was in the newspapers. There are always mm -hmm. the um, sun sign columns. Mm -hmm which I didn't think much of. And you'd see mention of it in TV shows and movies. Uh, but what really got my interest was one summer when I, and I think I was 11 at the time, my father took me and I have three brothers to an amusement park. And in this park, there were, they had these machines, you put in a nickel or a dime and you got your horoscope. It was a little mm -hmm. scroll you could open. Mm -hmm. So he bought his, <laughs> and on the way home, I read it, and it seemed so accurate. My first thought was he played a practical joke on me. Oh, okay. But, so that was describing your father? Yeah. Oh, okay. And But then I realized there's a little copyright notice that he didn't write this. It was copyrighted, and I couldn't understand how somebody just knowing his birth date could give all of this information that I thought was accurate at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, for example, wh one thing I still, re I don't remember it because I was 11, it was many, many years ago. But, um, you know, it, it was a typical sun sign horoscope and they had this thing about occupations. Now at the time he was working for Sikorsky Aircraft, which mm -hmm. makes helicopters. Mm -hmm. And it said under occupations, many people, he was a Gemini, with a Gemini prominent uh, go into the aircraft industry. They might be involved in helicopters. <laughs> wow, that's uh, and impressive. And so I'm thinking, how could this piece of paper know this about my father? And there were a bunch of things like that. <clears throat> and so what I did, because I said, I have to know how they did this. I was just so curious. I went to the library and started reading books now, I grew up in a little town in Connecticut, and our library maybe had two or three books on astrology. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a big, very popular. This was in the 50s. So the, it wasn't very popular as it became in the 60s and 70s. And one of the books I remember was Evangeline Adams. Yes, you mentioned her a yeah, lot. Yeah, and I read her book, and I mean... And then I was struck because she died, and I think in 1932. So this book was written about 1930. And as I read her preface, she said that she expected America to go to war in the early 1940s. Wow. And I'm thinking, again, I'm astounded. Like, she wrote this 10 years before it happened. She was dead. She couldn't have faked it afterwards. That's incredible. So how is this possible? <laughs> So uh, I got very curious and read, and then I taught myself, because I was fairly good at mathematics, uh, to, to calculate charts. And um, I had a table of logarithms and a slide rule and everything. And what did your father think about that? <laughs> I don't remember. I, I was very impressed. I don't think you know, he read it over, and uh, it was mm -hmm. just interesting to him. Wow. But to me, it was just st striking that I said, I have to learn. <laughs> There's a secret in, in the universe, and one wants to get in touch yeah. with that, right? It's... At the same time, I was very skeptical, because a lot of the stuff I read was just, I thought, garbage. It was just, mm -hmm. or it was either so general, it could apply to anybody, mm -hmm. or if it was more specific, it predicted things that didn't happen, or talked about character traits that I didn't see existing in the person. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it was a mixed bag. 
-hmm. but there were enough of these little nuggets of truth i said how could anybody possibly know that yeah that's yeah we always have that experience the first time we we come into contact yeah. with astrology how is it possible yeah so what i did after that is i started doing playing with astrology and i was fairly scientific so okay so yes would, you're a doctor right i would for friends and family members ask their birth information and i would go through their chart and i would write out little predictions for the next six months based mostly on transits at the time and then i'd check with them to see what happened and sometimes they were accurate and sometimes they weren't and then i try to figure out what i did or didn't understand and the other thing i did is i kept my own chart and followed the transits very carefully, noting what happened uh, in my own life to see mm. if what made sense and what didn't. So you're a Virgo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very Virgo, sun and Virgo, right? <laughs> okay. Okay, yeah. that's interesting. And did you write? I'm, I know you wrote many books, but what? Which was the first book on astrology that you wrote? It was the Horary book. The Horary is interesting because. You know, astrology was a hobby. It wasn't a main area of study. So I always did a little on the side. And if people would give me their information, I would like to look at their charts mm -hmm. and see if I could see any correspondence between the chart and what mm -hmm. they were like or what was going on in their life. And, um, and so I, I would read about it. I'm trying to think of horror. -y. Oh, my introduction to horror. -y this was interesting. I said there were very few books in our library, so I couldn't read much, but there was this magazine in the United States called Dell Horoscope Magazine, mm -hmm. which you could get in the supermarket. So periodically, I would buy a copy. Um, and, it, and I would read it. And I remember one year, and this I was a junior in high school. I remember for this reason. And in the back, they would have like classified advertising. Mm -hmm. And there was this ad that said, uh, I'm a astrology teacher in Brooklyn. I'm teaching a class on horary astrology. And I'm looking for volunteers to send in questions for my class. And if we select your question, we'll mail you the answer. And at the time I was a junior in high school, I was applying the colleges. I didn't come from a family with a lot of money, so I needed scholarships. Mm -hmm. And I had applied for some scholarships. There was one in particular I was interested in. And my question was, will I get this scholarship? So it was the mm -hmm. summer of my going into my before my senior year. And maybe a month or two later, I got a letter back in the mail. It was my original letter. And at the bottom, that just said no. <laughs> Okay, with no delineation. <laughs> no explanation, they're just oh. saying no. But but by then I had already found out that I'd been turned down for that particular oh, scholarship. So, so they got it right. Incredible. But then That's I thought, impressive. well, if they'd flipped the coin, you know, it was 50-50. <laughs> yeah. So it wasn't too convincing, but it still, they did get it right. So I was curious. So and, this was <clears throat> before Olivia Barclay discovered Elise. Yeah, this would have been about 1962, I think. Okay, so that's interesting because I had the idea, the wrong idea, that Harari came back uh, when once Olivia Barclay discovered Lily's uh, Christian astrology. But from what you're telling me and the chart that we used two weeks ago, I can see that Harari had been practiced, continued, it had continued to be practiced. I had a misunderstanding here. So could, you know, could you Olivia Barclay, <laughs> excuse me, <clears throat> what okay. she did is she drew attention back to William Lilly. Okay. That what had happened was toward the end of the 17th century with the scientific revolution, astrology had fallen out of favor. It stopped being taught in universities. It became kind of a fringe study. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it was largely looked down upon by scientists as a 
uh, just a superstition that you shouldn't pay attention to. Mm -hmm. And so there were still some astrologers who kept it alive, but it was a small minority. Oh, okay. And a lot of the books that had been available fell into disuse, were no longer available. You couldn't find them where they were in archived away in libraries. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> but Hori was still practiced. Um, there were copies of William Lilly around still. And, you know, his volume, actually, I have my Regulus edition was like this. Oh, wow. wow. So this was still around. There weren't many copies left. Olivia happened to get a copy which was in pretty good condition. And uh, she and the group she worked with published it. This is from her group, the Regulus group. And that came out, I think, in the mid-1980s. So that all of a sudden in the 1980s, Lily's book, which had not been available, readily available, for a couple hundred years was now available again. But it wasn't, it hadn't completely disappeared in the middle of the 1800s, roughly 1850. Uh, a British astrologer who called himself Zad Keel, I think, mm -hmm. uh, had a copy of Lily oh. and decided to do an abridged version. Because if you've read through Lily, you know, he puts a lot of yeah. detail yeah. in there. That So he published an abridged version of William Lilly. Oh. Uh, and that was available in English from about 1850. I got a copy of it, I'd say about 1960, oh. early 60s. So when you wrote your book, you didn't use a Olivia Barclay's edition. You, ha you already were, f were familiar I, with I pottery. had the abridged one, which was all that was available. Mm. Um, and I probably, I can tell you when I got it, because I was, I remember where I got, I got it. I was visiting a friend in Boston and we went to a bookstore. They happened to have it. So I bought it and I was in my early twenties. Oh, so you're a pioneer of horary. Well, oh. not a, <laughs> no, but in the United States and that book was available. That, that book was av available from about 1850 onwards in English. Okay. Okay. And and it was an abridged version of Lily. Oh, okay. So it didn't have all the elaborations, but it had the essence of Lily. And then there was another British uh, astrologer who wrote about the same time called Simonite. I don't okay. know if you know his work. No, I don't. Oh, he's don't. an interesting guy. He We did a lot of horary astrology. I'm sure he had a copy of either the original Lily or the abridged Lily. And he went through and put into the abridged one, really just copied Lily and shortened it. He put it into more modern English. Oh, okay. Yes, I've seen it in, on the internet. Yeah. That's it's why a, it rang it's a bell. It's an interesting book. And that was has been available since, again, the mid-1800s. Oh, okay. So you've been doing horary for decades. We can say that. Well, you should be it, an expert. Well, when I first tried it, I thought it was a bunch of uh, bull. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I thought it was nonsense. And I remember reading the abridged Lily, Lily and thinking, this doesn't make a lot of sense. And it was also very hard to figure out. You, know, you would look at charts. It's very hard. And it just it didn't make a lot of sense to me then. And, um, but, and I think the last chart we did from, for, was from a book by um, yeah, it was Alan from Leo. It was from the... Actually, I think I might have a copy here on my desk. Now, you told me that you had been reading uh, um, Leo. This ah, one. it was from him. Alan okay. Leo, he, which he published in, I think, 1909. Yeah, that's when I realized that I, I had misunderstood, that Harari no. had, had never died yeah. away. No, Now, Alan Leo, he is usually attributed as sort of the father of modern astrology mm -hmm. and introducing psychological mm -hmm. and spiritual astrology. Mm -hmm. He was involved yeah. with the um, Madame Blavatsky movement and so on. 
And that's true. But if you read his book, he also had a fairly busy practice. I think it was in London. And he would take horary questions, which he would get by mail. And he partly made a living answering horary questions. Yeah. Yeah. People don't know that because yeah. he is so criticized by traditional astrologers. <laughs> yeah. And okay. And he also mentions he, the references he mentions show that he really looked into the medieval authors and Hellenistic texts. What was available. I think, see, Lily had the advantage of being, read, being able to read Latin. And I, I'm not sure if he read Greek. And a lot of the sources that he cited were originally in Latin. Mm -hmm. And he would either read them himself or he would pay people to translate them mm -hmm. for him into English. Mm -hmm. um, I think as education changed, people no longer could read Latin and didn't have access to a lot of the more traditional literature. Yeah. And um, so I forgot where I was going. No, with well, Alan, Alan, Leo. Alan Leo, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to start sharing the chart we're going to see today. Sure. And so, so Horry was there. And then in the United States, there was a woman, Goldstein Jacobson. Yeah. Okay. I've read about her. She got very involved in Horry. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I don't know who she read. Most likely she had a copy of the abridged Lily but I don't know that for certain. And she wrote a very popular and excellent book, uh, which I think was published around 1960. So horary was really being practiced in 19, in the United States in 1960. And she had quite a following. She trained a lot of horror astrologers in the United States. I've seen many she, astrologers quote her. She, I never met her in any way, but she had a remarkable reputation uh, and she would make extremely accurate predictions, not just from horary, but from natal charts. And she really was, from what I understand, quite a gifted astrologer. Okay, that's a book to buy. I'll put it down. Yeah, it's, I think it's called Simplified Horary Astrology. Um, it, it's a classic. She had... The, I'd say she was the major influence in the United States, as wow. far as I can see, on horary. Then there was another woman, Barbara Waters, yes. who maybe 20 years later published another book that was very popular and is quite good. Yeah, I've seen it. I, I, you've mentioned her a lot in your, yeah. in your blog. And then in England, there were several people writing on horary. Um, Der I think Derek Appleby, yes. if I have it correct. Yes, I have his uh, book. Yeah, and he was, I've read his book, and I think I, I, years ago I wrote him a letter which he responded to, and then unfortunately he died shortly after that. Mm -hmm. He has uh, a very but, interesting horary in his book about yeah. whether the king, Richard, the king of England, had really killed his nephews. We can, we can look at it one time. That's an mm -hmm. interesting chart. Yeah, I don't remember that one, but mm -hmm. he was quite a, quite a good astrologer too. Uh, Charles Carter, another very prominent British astrologer, didn't, he sort of disdained horary. He didn't think much of it. Okay, yeah. Um, but anyway, so this chart, Okay, so let's, let's have a look at this chart, which is a chart where the querent asks about whether she will, not, not whether she will sell her house, but when she will sell her house, okay. right? And so I found this horary very, very interesting because it has mixed testimonies. There are some mm -hmm. testimonies that say you will sell it soon and others that that is state the contrary. So I would like, I would love to share this with you and, and let's have a look at it together. No, sure, Only, yeah. I would like to tell the, 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 our public public that the ascendant represents the person who starts the action. So in this case, the woman who's selling her home, the, the descendant would represent the buyers, the fourth house, 
is the property and the tenth is the price of the of the property and the fifth could be the the agency the what you call it real estate agency mm -hmm. okay so well it's i'm i'm going to i'm going to tell everybody that i really learned harari when i started reading my charts with you and what you did was because you're a virgo you started a, giving me a method because if not Harari can be really confusing so I yeah, always start with looking at the day and at the hour at the planetary hour so yeah, it's, I think that's important that if you just yeah. jump into a chart I think even before you look at the chart it's important to think through how will I answer this question in the chart Okay. Because once you actually see the chart, you can you can get confused. Yes, that's very very important. Yeah. Which houses represent the significators? Right. Yes, right. because so you can it, to, change your to, mind once you see the chart. Right. But it, so it's best to think. Well, this person wants to know when will I sell my house. So I'm the seller. A planet will represent me in the chart. Exactly. There has to be a buyer. A planet will represent the buyer in the chart. Usually it's the ascendant ruler that represents the seller and it's the seventh ruler right across the horizon that represents the buyer. And so for there to be sale, they have to come together in some way. If they make no connection, there's no sale. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. th that's the basic conception. Mm -hmm. And um, okay. And also we could, we could look at the seventh ruler making a, a connection to the ruler of the fourth right because it's the now if we see the 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 ruler of the first making a connection with the ruler of the fourth that could mean that the pro property remains with the, the owner <laughs> instead of going towards mm -hmm. the buyer well, well see this is an interesting question because it's when will i sell my house mm -hmm. uh the client is assuming that he or she will sell the house. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so there's really two questions. Will I sell my house? And if I will sell it, when will I sell it? Ex exactly. Yeah. And that's yeah. why stating the question correctly is so important in Harari. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And so there are some considerations before judgment in this chart, many considerations before judgments, for instance, the late ascendant, the fact that the ascendant is in the Via Combusta and the moon is also in the Via Combusta, those are signification um, mm -hmm. considerations before judgment. Right. I'm sure I like to start with the day and oh, hour. Oh, yes, you're ruler. right. Yes, you're right. You're right. <laughs> so it's a Sunday mm -hmm. and it's a Jupiter hour. Mm -hmm. And the sun here is in the sixth house. Mm hmm. And it rules. Um, it rules the eleventh. The eleventh, okay. And where's Jupiter here? Jupiter is is in the first house. In the first house, it rules. And it rules the, the second, second, the third, and the sixth. Exactly. Yeah. So it's curious that the sixth house is being emphasized. I'm not yes. sure what to make of that. Okay. And maybe. Um, yes, maybe living in that in that house was getting too much for her. Because you can also see the, the ruler of the eighth in the mm -hmm. six. So yeah. maybe she was paying t a high taxes for living there. Maybe it was getting. Maybe it's a lot of how hard to take care of such a house. Maybe exactly. A it was labor getting, involved. Yeah. Not a pleasure any, any longer. It was a six house matter. And then I also like to look at the 12th part of the ascendant. Yes. <laughs> I know we've talked about this. Yeah. And th that's an old technique that goes way back, I know, probably to Babylonian times, in which you divide the sign into 12 divisions. Mm -hmm. So the, the rising sign here in this case, which is Libra. And at 2953 is Perfect. the last part mm -hmm. of, of Libra. So the 12th part is in Virgo. Yeah. And Virgo in this chart is a 12th house matter. So, and the 12th part often shows what is on the querent's mind. Mm -hmm. So there's something related to the 12th house. Maybe she feels very, is it a she, the person who asked the question? It's a, it's a woman, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
So maybe she feels very confined or restricted in this yeah. house. And, and which you can, would, yeah, it fits and then with the, the, the Mercury, the, which rules the 12th, is in the sixth, but in Aries. Okay. So and that, it's retrograde. Okay. The charts begins to give us this idea of the, the something that she doesn't feel free. She related. feels burdened, maybe Bur trapped, confined, restricted, limited. Exactly, yeah. And maybe it's too much work for her or... Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. And, and so if I were meeting with her, I would mention this and see if I could understand better her situation. Yeah, yes. And then, okay, so now let's let's have a look at the significators. So. The, the woman who sells is represented by Venus, the ruler of the Ascendant, right. and we see that... Before we do, I would look mm -hmm. at the Ascendant itself, because okay. it's a late Ascendant, mm -hmm. traditionally, and Lily included, so th this is one of the considerations before judgment, <clears throat> meaning there may be something about this chart that's warning the astrologer about it may be somehow difficult to interpret or the matter may have, because it's so late, it's just about the change sign. Yes. The matter may have progressed so far that there's very little the querent can do about it. Mm -hmm. Or there may be some other limitation that we're not aware of on interpreting this chart. Maybe there's other information she hasn't given you that would help you understand it. Mm -hmm. um, so Bonatti used the considerations before judgment. Bonatti, this astrologer from the mm -hmm. 13th century, Italian astrologer. Right. And he writes 146, if I'm not mistaken, considerations, <laughs> aphorisms before judgment. Right. And one can choose when one sees that a chart has many considerations before judgment. The astrologer can choose not to read it because there's something fishy going on or there's something that, that's not clear. Or maybe he won't or she won't be able to help the, the querent. Yeah, I find with the very late ascendant, often it means that it's kind of irrelevant to read the chart because things are out of the querent's control. Oh, okay. <laughs> and no matter what you say, um, for example, I'm making this up, I wouldn't necessarily say this about this chart, but it could be that at the time she's asking the question, the house is off the market. Or, oh, okay. You know, something like that, that it, it's so late that mm -hmm. matters have progressed to a point where neither you nor she can do anything to, to change what's going to happen. Okay. I find it useful whenever I see a horary where the, the ascendant is so late, I always tell the, the, the querent this. Maybe it's not worth reading the chart and and investing in reading the chart because matters are out of your hand already. Or they may be, we don't know that for sure. Okay. The other thing is that all the angles are cardinal. Yes. Which suggests that the situation is very rapidly changing. Yes, there's a um, lot going on. Mm -hmm. There's a lot going on and things are changing as we speak. Yeah. So that's another issue. And then the via combusta I'm not sure how valuable that is. I mean, okay. it's, it's always in the literature. It's uh, and like, I guess it is a warning, but... Like the person know. is really anguished or she's not in a very, maybe, the, the ideal state of mind. So when mm -hmm. the querent isn't in a, in a very good state of mind, sometimes reading the chart gets difficult. Right, especially with the moon there, the, the yeah. moon being the emotional aspect of this, that maybe she's distraught or desperate to sell this house. Yes, and, yes, that's the way I saw it as well, yeah. yeah. And it says moon void, of course, but is that, is it well, really void, of course? I wouldn't, I wouldn't consider it's void, of course, because once it changes into Scorpio, it would make an opposition. Yeah, it'll the oppose the Venus. And then the a, a, modern definition says you only look at aspects up to the change of sign. Yes. That's not how Lily read it. No. Um, I mean, he mentions that, but later in an example, he doesn't use that, that concept. Right. So whenever the moon is within or 
of another planet, of, of making a, a contact with another planet, it doesn't, it doesn't matter that it has to change signs. That would right. mean a change, in, a change in the circumstances. In this case, the moon is, represents the prize, and it's about to enter Scorpio, where mm -hmm. it's in its sign of fall. So it could mean that the, the price of the house is about to fall. Yeah, that she wouldn't get the money she wants for this mm -hmm. house if mm -hmm. she were to sell it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And interesting, Lily, I think, also mentions as a, the queer planet from whom the moon most recently separated. Separated, yeah. And the buyer can be the planet that the moon is about to aspect. Yeah. So in, in this, this case, case, it would be the Venus would be a possible buyer. Yeah, that can be and, confusing because it also represents the, the querent. Yeah. That can be confusing. And also Lily uses the moon uh, to represent the property. The house itself. Yeah. The house itself. So, okay. <laughs> but I would go, I would start with principal signifiers. Okay. So here, Venus is the seller. Mars is the buyer. Saturn and is the house. Right. And so will Venus connect with Mars? Let's see. And it will. <laughs> because right. Venus is very, very strong in, in Taurus, mm -hmm. placed in the seventh of the buyer. So the querent is thinking of the buyer. Yes. And it will trine Mars in six degrees and a half. Right. So that's a very positive aspect and suggests that she will be able to sell it. Exactly. Yeah. And what is Mars doing? And, and Venus is strong, as I said, but Mars... Venus is in Taurus, Mars is, in, is exalted in Capricorn. Exactly. And the house is also in its own domicile. Mm -hmm. So we see that the main significators are very, very strong in this chart. Right. And so Mars is approaching the house, Saturn. Mm -hmm. So one would think this, this woman is going to sell fast because we see that Venus is approaching Mars and Mars is approaching the, the house itself, the property. And there's less than one degree there, only mm -hmm. 23 minutes between Mars and Saturn. And, and Saturn receives Mars because Mars is approaching mm -hmm. Saturn from its, right. from its place of domicile. So this is a very, very strong uh, conjunction. Right. But the thing is that she didn't, <laughs> and she this didn't. was more than two years ago, and she and didn't sell the, the house. house. So I was really confused about this chart. Mm -hmm. And my reasoning was that because the moon can also represent the property, the fact that the moon is on the ascendant, that is the seller, and is about to make an opposition to Venus, which is also the seller, that is, that is a testimony that the, that the property remains with the seller instead of going towards the buyer. So we have a mixed testimony in this chart. What do you think? Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, I generally go with the principal significators. So I would need to think this through more carefully. Because you so, see the Venus... Now, partly... We have to be sure Venus is not about to turn retrograde. <laughs> I don't think so, but let me check my yeah. ephemeris. I have them here. So this is from April 2018. Yeah. And let's have a look. Venus, no, she she didn't turn retrograde. Okay. So the, the, the Venus will complete that. Um, it, yeah. Trying to Mars, Mars. And Mars will also get near, get will also conjoin Saturn. So how about that? <laughs> but now, is there any interference with Venus uh, trying There isn't. Mars? I also looked at that. There isn't. There's no interference. There is a, a translation of light between Mercury translates the light from Saturn, which is the house, mm -hmm. to the sun. But the sun represents, uh, rules the 11th. So it isn't a, it isn't a, a bad house. So that... I don't know what that means, but I didn't see any interference. But what, what about the moon? The moon will square Mars before Venus can trine Mars. 
Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm, I'm going to stop sharing this yeah. and I'm going to share it so that we can see we can see what what's going going to go on the dynamic. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me have a look. We're going to have a look at days. You're you're seeing the the dynamic chart, right? No, I still see the original chart. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing this and go mm -hmm. to the dynamic. And so what we have here is if we advance the chart for days, we see that the moon, yes, the moon squares Mars before, instead of days, I'm going to use hours. Right. And so I'm going to use like 20 hours or 15 hours. Well, you know, use shorter than that, maybe okay. six hours, a quarter of a day. Oh, I can use one hour and let's have a okay. look at what, what happens. So we see that the moon is going to make a sextile, a sextile to Mars before Venus reaches Mars. But that is a good sign because mm -hmm. the if the moon is the property Mars. and Mars is the buyer, mm -hmm. right. so, so that should be good. It's going, to, it's going to sextile Mars on the 2nd of April, uh, the 2nd of April in the, in the morning. Okay. So this is so another testimony in favor of this. Yes. So let's go back to the original. Okay. I'm going to stop um, sharing. And now I'm going to share the original. Okay. Let's have a view. Horary. Are you seeing the big screen or, or the orange? Or you the see or the orange one. Oh, I'm um, sorry about that. I'm not very sorry. good using technology. Or maybe okay. just the chart like you showed. Okay. Well, okay, there it is. Okay. So in this case, <laughs> uh, maybe it's a warning to pay attention to the considerations before judgment. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, because we have three considerations before judgment. We have the ascendant in Via Combusta, the moon in Via Combusta, and the late ascendant. Right. And again, if you use moon as the property, William Lilly do, does that, mm -hmm. then the fact that the moon is, is about to oppose Venus, the ruler of the ascendant, is another testimony that the, the, the property will remain with the, with the seller, not with the buyer. But the thing about this chart is that we have mixed testimonies. Mm -hmm. On the one hand, if we use the moon, it says, no, you won't sell. But if you use the significators, it really says that you will sell. So I, would al I also always thought that the significators were much stronger than any other testimonies in the chart. Right. Yeah. Except the considerations come before judging the chart. Mm -hmm. The considerations tell you whether the chart is able to give you a valid answer or not. Okay, but it says be careful with this chart. Maybe the person wasn't very careful when she asked the question or she's keeping information or there's something, but it doesn't tell you that you can't read the chart. Correct. And the significators here are really powerful because they're in angles, or mm -hmm. at least Venus is in an angle. They're in, in their own dignity. Mm -hmm. So my question is, why didn't she sell the house? Unless that distance between Mars and Saturn is talking about years instead of, instead of months. And she will sell it. I mean, this chart is saying that she will sell it, but well, maybe usually, the time you judge frame. timing by the primary significators. When will the Venus okay. aspect the Mars? Because and those are the two principles in the sale. So here we and, have six degrees. Right. The, the Venus is angular, but fixed. So mm -hmm. you think weeks, months, not years. I thought months when I saw this. Yeah. And, um, and the and well, Mars is cadent, Mars is cadent, but it's in 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 a cardinal sign, so that is speed. Again, I mm -hmm. thought months, 
when I saw this. So mm -hmm. this is one of those charts that really wants one to, to say, Harari doesn't work, <laughs> let's give up. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it is curious. It is curious, yeah. And we can also use, another, another thing is that we could also use the secondary significators because, because the, the ascendant is so late, it means that Scorpio is, um, is um, also the ruler of the first house. Uh, Scorpio is also in the first house. It's, it's intercepted. intercepted right? So yeah. Mars, in this case, becomes the seller. And Venus becomes the buyer. You see my point? Mm -hmm, yeah. But again, what does this, does it mean that the moon is going to Venus? It means that the property is going to the buyer if we use the secondary significators. But that Mars mm -hmm. could mean that the, the, the seller is going towards the property. So I think that the answer to this chart is using the secondary significators, but why should you, if you have, why not use the, the, the main significators? You see my point? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, no, we're, we're trying to make the answer come out correctly. I don't think we should do that. Exactly, yeah. Um, what about Anthesias? I'm looking at, at the Anthesias and I don't find anything relevant, relevant in the Anthesias. So, this is one of those mysteries. <laughs> it is curious, yeah. I'm making you think. Well, no, I, as you, I, I also would have said, it looks like there will be a sale. The Venus will aspect the Mars. I had no doubt in my mind. Yeah. No doubt at all in my mind. And, you know, the, the moon is fast, as you told us the other day, we see mm -hmm. that the moon is in a northern latitude, so that means faster, and the moon is going to try, after opposing Venus, it's going to, it's going to try and Mars. So clearly the answer here is given by the moon, which is also confusing because the moon isn't very strong, but it is right on the ascendant. So maybe that's the clue here. It's, it's interesting. Yeah, I'm still thinking that there's so many considerations before judgment that maybe it's a warning we shouldn't interpret this chart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think. <laughs> because it could give us the wrong answer. And it did. But, uh, just curious, let me just, um, my Lily here, let me look up what he says. Uh, if I can find it quickly. Yeah, no rush. Looking for his comments about. Considerations before judgment. Right? I think, let's see. Okay, considerations before judgment. So if late degrees ascend, which it does, it is not safe to give judgment except when the querent be in years corresponding to the number of degrees ascending. Which is not the case. So yeah. the queen would have to be 29 years old. No, and she was 40 something. Okay. Then it is not safe to judge when the moon is in the late degree of a sign. So that's another consideration. Yes, yes. Uh, or when the moon is in the via combusta. Mm -hmm. So it's another consideration. Yes. And the, the ascendant in, in the Via Combatta as well. We right. have many considerations. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, that I'm trying to remember this lady's chart. And because I, I, I was with her this week, and I'm sure that her n south node is at 28 degrees of Libra. Oh, interesting. That's interesting because whenever you see. The, you compare the natal with the Harari and you see that mm -hmm. this, so that south node could also, should have been, should have been a warning. Right, if you compared this to her natal chart. Yes, yeah. But again, I would have, if I saw this chart today, I would, I would give the same answer as I gave two years ago. 
yes, you're going to sell the house and it's going to be fast. <laughs> <laughs> because Mars is approaching, so she hates me right now. <laughs> well, I wouldn't go with the fast because the the Venus is uh, in Taurus, so okay. that slows things down. Mm -hmm. And is Venus? I'm just. What is the um, altitude of Venus? We have here the latitude. You mean the latitude? I'm sorry. It's the latitude. Pl plus two, two degrees north, two forty eight north. So that, okay. that should I be... remember that. So that tends to slow things down being of oh, north latitude. I thought the north latitude tended to... to oh, it's to speed it up. I'm sorry. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Yes, we talked about that two weeks right, ago. I'm sorry. Yes. Mars is with a south latitude. Mars is with a southern latitude. Right. I mean, that. I'm not sure exactly where that oh, idea no, comes from. No, but my mistake, Venus is also with a southern latitude. It's zero degrees minus. I, th I was so looking at... So it's slightly at, south, so it's maybe yes. slight slowing. Yes, but anyway, you could, you could have used, well, a bit longer than six months maybe, but not more than two years. No, I mean, I agree with you. I would have said too, you will sell this. And... Oh, that's such a comfort because I felt <laughs> <laughs> such a horrible so clearly astrologer. We're getting, we're getting a wrong answer here. Yes, and, um... yeah. And I know that the, the sky is always right. So we're not seeing the right, we're not seeing the right, what do you call them? A, we're not looking at it, at it right. This is a mystery. Maybe we should look at it again this week and see if we find anything and share it again next week. Mm -hmm. I mean, my only other thought is I, I like to look at the angles and what's closest to the angles. Yes. And here, here we, it's Pluto moon. very close to the fourth, but moon, the moon very close to the first, and Uranus very close to the seventh. The moon is the strongest a, yeah. a, the, the most angular planet. And another right. thing that we could see is receptions, right? Because we see that Venus is approaching Mars, but Venus is approaching Mars. Venus is the seller and Mars is the buyer. Mm -hmm. a, from a, with a very, this is with no reception because Venus is in the place of exile or detriment of Mars. Oh, yes. Okay. Okay. But it's still, it's going to be a trine. So there's no need for reception. And mm -hmm. it's a trine from, from uh, the planets are strong. Venus is strong and angular. So that shouldn't be a problem. The fact that there is no recep reception. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the moon is going to sextile Mars, which is the buyer from Scorpio. And again, this is a sextile, but this time it's with reception because the moon is approaching Mars from the domicile of Mars, from Scorpio, even though Mars, which is the, the buyer, is in a place where, that is not good for the moon because it's in, in Capricorn where the moon has its exile. Right. So I love, I love when, when this happens because I always tell my students, you're going to be wrong. And I mean, don't fight with that because it's mm -hmm. going to happen. Sometimes you come across this kind of horaries that are really tricky and, and it happens. One has to be prepared. This happens. Yeah. And maybe... My only thought was maybe we need to pay more attention to the considerations yeah. as warning us that <laughs> this is a very hard chart to read and get exactly. right. Basically, yeah. it's what it's saying. Yes. And that, or there's something about the situation we're not seeing that will not allow us to get the right answer. Yeah. And I remember a posting once a letter, um, a chart um, about um, a horary, about selling a property as well. Mm -hmm. And it was my own. And I remember I also got the wrong answer. And I remember Lee Lehman saying, but Maria, the fact the the chart is wrong because you're, you're asking, are we going to sell the house? Because <laughs> when you sell the house, you're not, m most of the times you're not living on your own. And I wanted to sell the house at that time, but my husband didn't. 
So oh, she said, okay. you're never going to get this chart correct because there's no we <laughs> in that chart. So maybe that could, I, so I'm going to ask this is the, a married woman. And... Yes, this is a married woman with kids. So that, that could be also the fact that there are two rulers to the ascendant, you know? Because, well, but that could also be all these considerations. Yes. So that, that yeah. is a good thing I could ask her. I'm going to get mm -hmm. back to, I'm thinking right now, this hadn't occurred to me before, but that could also be one of the reasons why this chart couldn't be read correctly. Maybe, maybe when she asked in 2018, uh, because the question is, when will we sell the house? Mm -hmm. But maybe all those, all those considerations are telling us, be careful. Maybe she wants to sell, but he doesn't. You know, that could be a possibility. Or her husband doesn't, or the kids don't want to move. Or... Yeah, because in that case, because we have two significators for the ascendant, Venus and Mars, and they're mm -hmm. telling us opposite things. Uh, have you spoken to her since about this? Did yes, she say... we have, but she, I never asked her this. It, it just and occurred to me. So I'm going to do that right does away. Does she have a theory about why the house is not sold? No, she didn't. She was convinced. Uh, no, she doesn't. Well, I mean, this is, this is a chart based in Argentina. Mm -hmm. And because of political reasons, the, the, mark, the market is, has gone down. Okay. Okay, so that could be a, a reason. But again, the significators in this chart were so, so strong that she was convinced that she was, was going to sell before the end of the year. And me too, me as well. I mean, she, she understood. See, it, it could be, again, I'm thinking, a late ascendant can mean things have progressed so far that it, you can't answer the question. Mm -hmm. And the moon and the ascendant are about to change signs. So you know there'll be a change of circumstances that will affect the outcome. Mm -hmm. And she's assuming she will sell the house in the question. So when will she sell the house? assume she will sell the house. It would be better to ask, will we be able to sell the house? Exactly. But Which is not what she asked. Yeah. But isn't that implicit in her question? Wouldn't you say that? It should be, but I'd like to be more explicit. <laughs> okay. But again, when she it says- was, I would rephrase it. Will I be able to sell my house? Mm -hmm. And if I will be able to, when will that happen? Two different questions. Yeah, again. Yeah, but again, the fact that the, 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 the buyer, which is Mars, is approaching Saturn, which is the property. Mm -hmm. Isn't that already answering that previous question? <laughs> Except that in a few seconds, the ascendant will switch to Mars. And the, yeah, yeah. You know, and if, Mars she, is, yeah. if she, wasn't it you wrote 732, did, but you, what if she had asked it at 732 and 15 seconds? Okay. But you would, you would have a different chart. Yeah. So that's I, another possibility then. Yeah. With these considerations, maybe you didn't time exactly the question. The sec oh, that makes a lot of sense because I wrote down 732, but we are right. Maybe it was 732.45. Right. You're right. But it, it, this, it's such a late, yeah. uh, it's 53 so it, seconds. I think in 20 seconds it will change. Okay. So, and so that makes so a lot of sense. So maybe you have the wrong chart. I mean, oh. Oh, that makes sense. That's and why that there are could, so many considerations. So try, can you advance the chart? Of course. Say 15, course. 20 seconds. Oh, so let's see what happens. That makes sense. Let's okay. try 732.30, like take the average. Okay. Okay. Because 732 could be anywhere from 732 to 732.59. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit the chart and put 32. Thirty-two, twenty. We'll try thirty. We'll make the average. Okay, thirty. <laughs> and let's see what happens. And yes, you're right. 
the ascendant is going to be now, let me share it. It's at zero degrees of Scorpio. No, no, sorry, I shared the wrong chart. I'm out of it. You know, as a general rule with natal charts, if I get a, an ascendant that that's late, I'm always wondering if I have the right birth time. Oh, that's a very good tip. It hadn't you, occurred to me. That's interesting. Right. And so that could so be what all the warnings the, are. Yes, now it makes sense. I see your point because we look at the, at the time, but we don't look at the seconds. So maybe right. we and, should have a device that is, oh, look at this. It's, this is a completely different chart. Now we have Mars as the significator of the seller. And mm -hmm. Mars is approaching the property, and we have and Mars is the seller, right? Yeah. And again, Venus we, is the buyer. Okay. Yes, it, but but the buyer is also going to approach first the seller, and then the property. Mm -hmm. So again, we're having the same answer here. Only Mars is going to approach the property before. So what could that mean? That this is going to take longer than she thought? because Venus is going to approach Mars. I, I know what is going on. Maybe Venus approaches Mars, but it approaches Saturn before doing that. But again, we have the same answer because Venus would be approaching, approaching the house. Mm -hmm. And that is a testimony of, of, that she will sell it. So I would say, I would tell this person that she will sell the house. One second. Are you gonna be on for long? A few more minutes. Because I want Rachel offered to go get some stuff at the supermarket if you were out for a long time. Okay, give me one second. Yes, yes. Give me five, ten more minutes. Oh, sure. <clears throat> no, my wife had a question, sorry. Okay, it's okay. So again, Tony, if we if we advance this chart, I'm gonna stop yeah. sharing this chart and advance it. We can see dynamic. We can see that share screen okay we can see that what's going to happen is that venus is going to approach mars mm -hmm. but mars is venus is going to approach saturn before approaching mars oh interesting yeah that's interesting but anyway saturn is still the property so we have that mm -hmm. the buyer is approaching the property but it doesn't approach Mars before uh, approaching the property. The, the, the significators behave mm -hmm. differently than we, than we thought. Let me go to days because if not, this is going to take forever. Right. Okay. So you see how Venus sextile uh, trines Saturn and then mm -hmm. it's sextile, it trines Mars. Okay, so this is food for thought. Mm -hmm. What do you think? We're ha going to have to think harder about this. We'll have this. to think about this one. Yeah. We're but it's have possible, to... you know, I think if it were maybe just 20 seconds later, it would have switched the ascendant and that the is, ascendant. That is a great tip you gave, gave us, and yeah. So maybe in that case, you would have seen it differently. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So, thank you so see, much. To make yeah. the deal you want in, in the second chart, the Venus to approach Mars without interference. And in this case, Venus hits Saturn before it hits Mars. And Saturn is the property, but it also is a general signifier of some sort of obstruction or mm -hmm. hindrance. Yeah, but I mean, that Saturn so could, is very strong. So it could strong. be that Saturn's strong, but it's cadent. Oh, okay. So it takes longer. And usually cadent is considered, Saturn is dignified by being in Capricorn, but by being cadent, right, it's fairly far, far from the angle. It's mm -hmm. considered weak, not yeah. as able to act. Accidentally weak. Okay. Right. Okay. So it could be, oh, yeah, and also it's a night chart, right? Do you use sex? Yes, I do. Use the sun that. is below the horizon. Mm -hmm. So Saturn in a night chart tends to be more malefic than in a day exactly. chart. Exactly. It's out of sect. 
so that maybe what it, this is is the potential buyer Venus looks at the house and gets turned off by it and mm. never makes the offer. <laughs> mm. Okay. Uh, I see your point. Oh, well, this, this has been a, a difficult chart. Yeah, it is a difficult chart. But it's, it's food for thought. I love mm -hmm. it when, when it's challenging because you learn yeah. so much from, for instance, now I've learned that if the ascendant is very early or late, I should be very, very careful with the seconds. Yeah. That's, yeah. A, that's a very important point. Okay. Right, because within that minute, the ascendant changes. Exactly. Yeah. And that changes the two significators. Yes, only 30, 30 seconds apart and you have a different significator. Right, well, I think it's less than that because it's 003 Scorpio. Yes, less so than 30 seconds. probably 20 seconds, seconds apart. Yeah. Yes, yeah. So this, been, this has been very, very interesting, Tony. Thank you so much for your time. Okay. And well, I'll choose a, um, an easier chart for next time. Oh no, these, these are good because it's, but it's these, good to these, look at the hard ones. Yes, and... it makes you think. Okay, mm -hmm. well, thank you so much. Okay, I'll see you soon. Bye-bye then. Bye-bye.